What are friends for? Hopefully, to be there when you need them. Otherwise, you run life's race as if you're the only one on the track. When you're hit with bad news you can scarcely absorb, a friend can be a great help. However, the friends of Job were scant comfort when he was undergoing his severe trials. Their counsel demonstrated the limits of human understanding. Stay with us. From the Moody Church in Chicago, this is Running to Win with Dr. Erwin Lutzer, whose clear teaching helps us make it across the finish line. Today, Dr. Lutzer continues his series, God, Why Me? We'll be hearing more of his message on when comfort is discomfort, and we'll feel what happens when our theology confronts our reality. One day, and it must be 12 or 15 years ago, I was speaking at a conference, and a man asked to see me later, and I still remember him. I think I would almost recognize him if I saw him after these years. He was standing outside under a tree. And I'll never forget his face. He had a son who had just committed suicide about uh, 10 days before. And this Christian man, as he was spilling out all of his grief and all of his unanswered questions, said to me, really, he said, I have to say that if my son is not going to be in heaven, he said, I don't want to be in heaven either. He said, there's no way that I can be in heaven if my son is lost. And so we discussed whether or not, A, his son had accepted Christ, And there was some question about that, but B, even if the answer is yes, what happens to someone who commits suicide who is a true believer? Now, the interesting thing is that these are the kinds of discussions that can take place theoretically very easily, but when you have a broken man who is weeping before God, who is crying out and who refuses comfort, suddenly they take on an entirely different character. And I said some things to him. I think I even said some wise things to him. But I don't think that he received them. Maybe I was like one of Job's friends who thought I had all the answers, when in point of fact it is very difficult sometimes to have a speculative theological answer to an emotional hurt. It's very difficult. Now, you know there are some people who have very good intentions who, when someone gets sick, simply says to them, what you need to do is to confess your sin. You need to have enough faith. You need to seek God. And when you do, God will hear you and God will answer you. Now, to me, this discussion is not speculative. Because there was a member of our own family who bought heavily into that theology and when this individual was not healed at a particular point in time, went through days and days of depression believing that God had forsaken her. You see, because if you accept that theology that everybody is supposed to be healed all the time, all that they need to do is to have faith, and if they aren't healed it's because of lack of faith, that can become cruel, diabolically cruel. And if you believe that, I suggest that you read the last part of the book of Job because God was not happy that those three friends tried to pound that into Job's head. It isn't that simple. Sometimes when people become sick, there are those who send them books in the hospital, underlined, say, you know, underlined at the appropriate places. Be sure to read this, and then those books are sent sometimes even anonymously, just saying, get with the program and you will be healed. What sin is it that you have committed that you have not dealt with? Number one, they talked without feeling, without feeling. They had many nice things to say, but Job was the one who was hurting. It was an unfair discussion, very unfair. It's entirely different when that iron, hot iron, that stake is in your own flesh. Secondly, they talked without listening. They talked without listening. Now, we don't have time to do that here. That's your assignment. You're supposed to be reading the book of Job, and I'm sure that all of you are. I am a man of faith, and uh, I expect you to be reading it. And one of the things that you should look out for as you read it is this. You'll find that Job asks a whole series of questions, and then the next person who speaks does not answer those questions at all. Because really, they are not interested in what Job has to say. 
They are interested in giving their theological discussion because they're saying, we have worked this out. We believe that everybody who reaps iniquity reaps it because they have sown it. And all that we are doing is we're trying to look at your life and to try to figure out why you're going through this experience. And if you only gave us the time and if you were only honest, you'd admit it's because you're a big sinner who has not really been willing to take care of sin in your life. And so Job asked questions that they didn't answer. They didn't treat him fairly. They were not trying to look at life through his viewpoint. They were trying to say, this is the way it is. There's an old Indian proverb that says that no one should criticize someone else unless he has walked a mile in his moccasins. Very good, very good. One of the best things you can do as a counselor, one of the best things you can do to hurting people is to try to put yourself in his or her shoes. One of the things that I find is that uh, if you were that individual, in that context, you would react probably the very same way that he or she is reacting. We become much more tolerant of other people's failings and their pain when we begin to listen to them and try to walk a mile in their moccasins. All right, they talked, actually, without feeling. They talked without listening. They talked without knowledge. They talked without knowledge. That was their big mistake. You see, the three friends, they didn't know what you and I know. We have such an advantage, and that's why I don't want to be overly critical with them. They were working with the theology that they had. But you see, their theology lacked something. It's like all of us have had the experience of walking along a street or I remember out in the farm walking along a field and seeing some letter that had been torn up into all kinds of bits and you get this bit of it and this piece over here and you maybe get a phrase or you maybe get a word but all the rest is missing and you can't make sense out of it. And that's what they had. They had a little bit of knowledge here, a little bit here and some very good insights over there but they didn't see the whole picture. They didn't know that God and the devil had had this discussion about Job. We know that. They didn't know it. They didn't know that Satan and God had the discussion and God says, have you considered my servant Job that he's upright and blameless and he fears God and turns away from evil? And Satan said, oh sure, you're bribing him. Anybody would, as long as you give him a lovely family, a lot